When the citizen moved forward in the bluegrass, and again last time, that last was not only a second big jump in a row, but represents seven points of development from this two-year-old top. And a bounce is now likely. Bravazzo was showing just moderate ability until the Derby, where his very wide trip earned him a huge new top. Lucas has been getting a lot of new tops in the last couple of months, but we still expected a bounce on two weeks rest and did not get one. Now it's his third try in five weeks off two big ones, a pattern in which has resulted in an off race for almost every Belmont runner not trained by Baffert. We're going to play against this one, but when barns start moving up horses, anything is possible. Obviously, rain wouldn't hurt this one. Redrap Billy had a solid two-year-old campaign with good figures before catching a dead rail in the Breeders' Cup, then showed gradual development this year. He earned a good figure when wide in the bluegrass and had a good pattern going into the derby, but threw a stinker in the slot. With five weeks rest since then, nine since his top, and only four points of development, this is one that definitely could run a new top. Since he's already fast enough to be relevant, that could get him a piece of this at an enormous price. Gronkowski was slow last year and has been gradually inching forward as a three-year-old. The switch to Chad Brown will probably move him up, but he's bred for grass and has too many points to make up even if he handles dirt. Watch out for this one on turf later. Hofberg ran well in his three-year-old debut and even better in the Florida Derby before backing up some in the slop in Kentucky, where he also has some trouble. This colt is very lightly raced, and with five weeks rest, he and Free Drop Billy are the two most likely to run new tops of the ones fast enough for it to matter. Justify came out running and hasn't stopped. He did back up a couple of points in the Preakness, and making his third start in five weeks, the two efforts could catch up with him, as has happened with so many others. And they weren't even making their sixth start in less than four months. If it was anyone but Baffert, we would just toss this horse. But even looking at his history in this situation doesn't help us much. It's a small sample, and half have at least paired their tops and half have not, though American Farrell was able to win with an off race. Justify is a very good three-year-old who may or may not run his race into Belmont at a short price. Noble Indy has a really wacky pattern. Healthy three-year-olds this time of year should be running their top at least every other race, unless either the most recent top was a big jump or they don't have enough time between races. This one hasn't done in his last three starts that would need a new top just to contend. But it is worth noting that Pletcher's runners have done very well in the Belmont, especially the last few years, with a decent number running new tops. We don't like Loma Lindy, but we're not going to totally dismiss it. Restoring Hope is another Baffert horse that jumped up shipping to New York, where he ran a new top in the wood, before a non-effort in the slop when blinkers were added. We will see whether he has them on again, but this one could be interesting in the exotics, especially if Baffert's horses are jumping up all over the place, like last year. Tenfold is the toughest call in this race for us. He went forward in the Arkansas Derby, and with five weeks rest, again in the practice. He's never gone back. He's fast enough to contend, and he's definitely bred for the distance. But he's also coming off two straight big tops, and this time on just three weeks rest. He's usable, but tough to count on. Vino Russo ran well in his debut, but then not as well the next three times, which may or may not be because they came at Tampa Bay. He exploded when he got back to New York, winning the wood with a faster figure than anyone here other than Justify has ever run. Not surprisingly, he bounced three points next time out in the Derby, and it looked even worse due to a very wide trip. This Colt has just about everything we look for. He's fast enough to win, with a good pattern and good rest. He's trained by someone who does well in this race, and he's bred to go long. The one caveat is that recently Velasquez has been making no effort whatsoever to save ground, not just on this colt, but in other races like the Oaks, where he cost Wonder Godot the race. Vino Rosso is good enough to win this race if he gets a reasonable trip. The reason we put figures on graphs 
is that we're not just looking for who has the best figures, but who figures to run well on a given day. Justify is the fastest horse, but he's no sure thing to run his race. And there are others that figure to run their best and maybe better than they have up to now. And if you bet against the last 13 horses trying to win the Triple Crown, you lost to American Pharaoh, but have done pretty well overall. It's always important to watch out for a dead rail, and given how they ran last year, it's worth keeping an eye on how Baffert's other runners are doing. The three we think are going to run well in this year's Belmont are Free Drop Billy, Hofberg, and Vino Rosso. The, the draw probably didn't make much difference, but given the way Velasquez had been riding, we would have preferred an inside draw. Free Drop Billy looks even better with his draw. He's a very viable long shot exotic kid. 